Well, hello and welcome to my weekly update on this Friday um, at the end of what has been a long and very tiring uh, week. A couple of things to update you about. First of all, this plan um, for a waste to energy incinerator uh, near Long Parish. Um, this week I met with Wheelabrator, who are the proposed operator of this uh, uh, facility, to talk to them about what their proposals are, but critically about the engagement that they're going to do with the local community. Uh, not um, not surprisingly, there's been a very strong reaction locally um, about the, this, this facility and the size of it, what it's going to be doing. And it's critical that this company engages well with the community. I did at the meeting request that they hold an engagement um, event in Whitchurch specifically in North East Hampshire, where a lot of people I know are very alarmed about this um, uh, this proposal. And the town council are very keen to have something in the town. Um, and they have... Happily, we'll be able to have agreed to do that now. So that has been secured. When we get the date and the time, I will let you know. I'm working very closely with colleagues, Caroline Noakes, Steve Bryan, neighbouring MPs, to look at this proposal. And when we have more news, I'll let you know. As I say, when this event is published, I will put it up on the Facebook so you can attend if you want to. Second thing to talk to you about is Brexit. It's obviously been a difficult week. As many of you will know, I have consistently voted for the Prime Minister's deal. Um, and I will continue to do so when it comes back next week. But in between that, I've worked quite hard to try and bring some unity, particularly in the Conservative Party, but also for other members of Parliament, um, with what became known, forgive me, as the Malthouse Compromise. Uh, this week that took a step forward in that when the Attorney General uh, brought his advice back on the changes that they, the Prime Minister had negotiated at the backstop, he made it clear that the alternative arrangement strand of what became known as Malthouse Plan A is firmly embedded as part of the escape route, if you like, from the backstop, and that's been committed to by, by, by both the EU and the UK. However, Plan B, which was designed uh, to provide a kind of fail-safe, if you like, uh, in the event of Plan A or the, the withdrawal agreement not going ahead, uh, was voted down. Um, uh, we managed to get quite a few members of Parliament from across the House uh, through the lobby in support of it. I went through the lobby with Dennis Skinner, the Beast of Bolsover, would you believe, um, who supported the Malthouse Compromise, as did, as did a number of Cabinet members. But there were lots of things going on on Monday night, and people really wanted to focus on this notion of taking no deal off the table. Um, once my amendment, or the amendment in which I had played a part, uh, was defeated, um, it then became clear that I had to vote whether to take no deal off the table or not, and I declined to do so. I think it's critical that we keep no deal on the table. And then last night, uh, the government presented a motion on a free vote as to whether we should extend Article 50 or not. I can see the case for a short technical extension now in the event of the withdrawal agreement passing, but we'll have to deal with that if that happens. The second part of the motion last night contemplated a much longer extension, which I couldn't agree to, and I voted against last night, along with the majority of the Conservative Party. So we now find ourselves in a situation where the meaningful vote, I think, is going to come back again next week. And in between times, there may be movement from the EU, hopefully, um, and certainly lots of intensive conversations with colleagues in the hope that we can get a majority through the lobby in support of the Prime Minister's deal next week, and then move on, leave the EU on the 29th of March as planned, and then move on to the really pressing domestic agenda, housing, knife crime, health, schools, all those things which assail people on a daily basis and which they want politicians to turn their energy to now um, for the future. So that's it from me this week. Please do, still time to participate up at the top of the page in the constituency poll that I'm holding. And if you really want to hear more from me, do go on the website where you can sign up for my newsletter on kitmalthouse.com. See you next time.